If you're in the trades, if you're a craftsman or an artist, or you are the king or queen of doing what it is you do, you will be tempted, your ego will push you to want to build something grand, something big, something amazing. But there are many of us entrepreneurs who fall into the trap of building this business that eats us alive. I spend a lot of time talking to business owners and entrepreneurs. And when people are running small organizations where, where they're at the front, you know, when I started Fanta, it was me, uh, a video camera, and an old laptop. That was it. I did all of the work myself. I did the selling, I did the, the video shooting, I did the editing, I did, I did everything myself. When you have a craft, when you have a skill, when you have a trade, whether you're a plumber or an electrician, whether you are a lawyer or an accountant, no matter what it is, when you are the sole practitioner or you are the person who's responsible for doing the work, you have two choices to grow your business. You either scale your business to the point where you're no longer doing the work or you continue to be the person who's doing the work. Right now, it's tempting. It, you know, a lot of us want to build these businesses where we are no longer doing the day to day, where we don't have to go out to the client calls, where we don't have to review the contract, where we don't have to do all of that work. And so we think growth, we think scale, we think how do we how do we make this bigger? But it's not the only way to run your trade, your business, and so on. There's this great quote that that I picked up from Mike Haddock Masonry. Mike is a YouTuber. He's like in his 70s or 80s, I think, in Pennsylvania. And I've been watching him for years and I love this guy. But he has this saying, stay small and keep it all. I was in business for 10 years before I ever even heard of this or thought of this. Stay small and keep it all. You know, I hit the point in growing my business where, and I hit this often, where I say, you know, if I just generated a lot more revenue or I got a lot smaller, I would finally be profitable. I would finally start to make some real money. I need to get a lot smaller and cut my overhead and cut my team and take on the work myself, then I'm gonna make crazy amounts of money. Or I need to get a lot bigger because getting a lot bigger in terms of revenue means now I can then pay for all of these things I'm doing. You know, Mike shared a story in one of his videos where he said, you know, he's a mason, so there's bricklayers and he's in Pennsylvania. And he said, you know, all these people would come in from New Jersey and New York and the East Coast and they would come into his little community, his little town, thinking I'm gonna build the world's largest business. I'm gonna be the head bricklayer and I'm gonna hire all these other bricklayers and I'm gonna build this empire so I don't have to do this stuff. And then they eat up all of their revenue and all of their cash building this empire. I used to be part of an internet marketing franchise system and I worked for the franchisor. And I can remember one franchise, um, the guy's name was Darren, he worked out of Boston. And I can recall him telling me back when I was starting my business, he was running a six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar business. Not huge, not tiny, but being in Boston with cost of living and cost of talent and the revenues that they were making, they, he literally made no money. All of the money coming in went to pay for this infrastructure and pay for this team and he was barely making anything. I don't know if he sold the business or closed the business and let everyone go or what have you, but he moved from Boston, he moves to Pennsylvania. He's a one man show, outsourcing everything and he's finally earning the money that he should have been earning all along. And so when I heard that story, you know, maybe eight or 10 years ago, I was, I was terrified that I was gonna build this thing and be able to pay everyone and not be able to pay myself because I wanted the big company. Yes, yes, you're right. I have the ego. I wanted the big company. I want the team who can do the things for me so I don't have to do everything myself. That's me. I I've, I've, have fallen into that. And lucky for me, after 13 years of growing this business, I've been able to achieve that for a few years now. I don't have to go out and do everything. I, I've, got a, I've got a team of over 20 people who can help me. But at the back of my mind, I've always thought about this stay small and keep it all. If you love what you do, your craft, your trade, whatever it is, and you're good at it, while your ego or your vision or your dreams might say to grow that company and build that company, you have to consider staying small. And here's why. If you are a lawyer and you love doing the things that lawyers do and you grow this really big practice, you will no longer be a lawyer. You will be a CEO or a COO. You'll be the head of HR. You'll be hiring and firing people. You'll be setting up systems. You won't be doing the lawyer things that you love doing as a lawyer. You'll spend all your time running the business. If you're an electrician and you have dreams of growing a really, really large company, now you're negotiating leases on trucks. Now you're making sure that you have the right people. And now you're negotiating contracts, like crazy contracts, because you have now become an electrical contracting company. You're not spending time 
all day, every day, helping people, going out on calls or doing whatever it is. And, and when you were, you know, a one or two or three man band and every single dollar coming in was something you could keep. Yes, you gotta buy tools and invest in marketing and a few little things, but you're staying small. You're keeping every single dollar that comes in. You're now medium sized, guess what? You're not making any money. All of the revenue that's coming in is supporting this medium sized company. You gotta go big. You gotta leapfrog going from small to big to be able to make it happen. And so if you find yourself thinking and feeling, I'm small, I'm early, I wanna be big, the very best thing you can do is stay small for as long as possible. Because one, you're gonna be closer to the work. You're gonna get the customer reviews and feedback and know what's working and not. You're gonna learn all of the processes of the business. You're gonna have the profitability that you need to be able to invest and stock things away for marketing, for sales, for operations, for whatever it is when you do start to grow. You are gonna make all your mistakes when it's you. And so it's tempting to wanna grow really quick. It's tempting to wanna be all things to all people. But think about what Mike says. Mike, the mason who's in his 70s, who's old school, he's able to pick his hours, he's able to pick his days, he's able to pick his projects, and because he does it on such a lean approach, every dollar that comes in that's not materials is a dollar that he keeps. Unless if you really want that big company, unless you're willing to really work for it and go from tiny to huge to pay for the infrastructure to do it, and for me, that took five years to get to the place where that happened. Do what Mike does, stay small, keep it all, and then plan your next move for growth. Is that a verb, lawyer things? The lawyer things people love doing as lawyers? If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.